Charles Darwin's The Origin of Species is a groundbreaking book that changed the way we think about the natural world. The book is written in simple, clear language, but it goes deep into the secrets of nature and explains how all the different kinds of life on Earth work. Darwin starts his story by talking about how animals became domesticated. He makes us think of a breeder who chooses animals or plants with desirable traits to pass on to their offspring, making those qualities stronger in the next generation. This is the process of artificial selection, which is the easiest for us to understand because it is managed by people. Just think about how all the dogs we have as pets today, from tiny chihuahuas to huge Great Danes, are descended from a shared wolf-like ancestor. From here, Darwin turns our attention to nature and says that a similar process is going on all around us, but that the world itself is making choices instead of people. This is the well-known process that he called natural selection. In the wild, genes that help a person live and have children are more likely to be passed on to their children. For example, a giraffe with a slightly longer neck can reach more food and is more likely to live, have babies, and pass on its genes for a longer neck. Then, Darwin gets into the idea of change. No two people are exactly the same, which is important for natural selection to work. Darwin didn't know where this difference came from, though. He could tell it was going to happen, but he didn't know as much about genes as we do now. We now know that the way people are different is because of random changes in their DNA. In the book, The Struggle for Existence, Darwin shows that all species have far more babies than they can keep alive. This leads to a fight for resources, and in this fight, having good traits can make the difference between living and dying, having babies or going extinct. In the case of the Galapagos finches, which are often linked to Darwin's work, the size and shape of a bird's beak could affect whether it could crack open the seeds on its island. Over time, finches with the best beaks for their surroundings would be more likely to live and breed, so the beak shapes of populations on different islands would become very different. In later parts, Darwin talks about how his idea could be criticized. He says that the fossil record, as it was known at the time, did not support his ideas exactly because there were many missing links. But he also talks about how the geological record is not perfect and how many fossils are likely still to be found or have been killed by natural processes over time. Darwin talks about the complicated web of life as well. He is amazed by how species are not separate from each other but are linked in complex ways that affect each other's survival. This is beautifully shown by how he talks about the simple bumblebee. If it went away, the clover it pollinates would die, which would hurt the animals that eat the clover. This shows how delicate the ecosystem's balance is. The book The Origin of Species ends with a strong thought about how great life is. Darwin imagines a twisted tree of life with branches that split and split again to show how many different kinds of life can come from a single source. He thinks about how chance changes and natural selection over long periods of time have led to the complexity and variety of life we see today. By looking at the world through Darwin's eyes, reading The Origin of Species is like going on an amazing trip. It gives a deep understanding of how nature works, which makes it an interesting look at the natural world and our place in it. Even though it's been more than 150 years, it's still as important and thought-provoking as ever.